What? what? You're Catholic? Yes, as a matter of fact I am. Well, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. Oh. So you're Catholic as well. Praise God. What? what? No, I follow the Bible alone. I let God speak to me through His Word, the Bible. I believe it is dangerous to let any church tell me what to believe. We need to read the Bible for ourselves. Can you prove from the Bible that the Bible is the only rule of faith for your life? Sure. 2 Timothy 3 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Many think that that verse claims scripture is sufficient as a rule of faith. But an examination of the verse in context shows that it doesn't claim that at all. It only claims scripture is profitable. That is helpful. Many things can be profitable for moving one toward a goal without being sufficient in getting one to the goal. Notice that the passage nowhere even hints that scripture is sufficient. Which is, of course, exactly what Protestants think the passage means. Um, I guess you're right, it doesn't say sufficient, does it? No it doesn't. The context of that passage of scripture is Paul laying down a guideline for Timothy to make use of scripture and tradition in his ministry as a bishop. Paul says, but continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable. For doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. In verse 14, Timothy is initially exhorted to hold to the oral teachings, the traditions, that he received from the Apostle Paul. Earlier in the same letter, Paul reminds of the value of oral tradition in chapter 1 verses 13 and 14. Follow the pattern of the sound words which you have heard from me. Notice that he says sound words, and what you have heard from me before many witnesses in trust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Notice that he says, heard, not read. Here Paul refers exclusively to verbal teaching, and reminds Timothy to follow that as the pattern for his own teaching. Only after this is scripture mentioned as profitable for Timothy's ministry. Wow, I've never met a Catholic who knew the Bible, like you do. If you recognize scripture for what it is, you'll see it wasn't intended to be an instructional tool for converts. In fact, not one book of the Bible was written for non-believers. The Old Testament books were written for Jews, the New Testament books for people who already were Christians. The Bible is not a catechism or a full-scale theological treatise. Just look at the 27 books of the New Testament. You won't find one that spells out the element of the faith the way catechisms do, or even the way the ancient creeds did. Those 27 books were written for the most part as provisional documents addressed to particular audiences for particular purposes. Most of the epistles were written to local churches that were experiencing moral or doctrinal problems. Paul and most of the other New Testament writers sent letters to these local churches in order to rectify these problems. There was no attempt on the part of the writers to impart a vast body of basic doctrinal instruction to non-believers or even to simply summarize everything for the believers who received the letters. I don't agree with any of that. The New Testament is the basis of the Christian faith. But how can it be? Since the Christian faith existed and flourished for many years before the first book of the New Testament was written. The books of the New Testament were composed decades after Christ ascended into heaven. And it took centuries for there to be general agreement among Christians as to which books comprise the New Testament. And that brings up another point. How do you know what constitutes the New Testament canon? How do you know for certain that these 27 books here in your New Testament are in fact inspired and should be in the New Testament? And how do you know for certain that maybe some inspired books haven't been left out of the canon? Well, the early Christians agreed on the 27 books. The Holy Spirit led them to this agreement. The fact is, that the Holy Spirit guided the Catholic Church over time, 
to recognize and determine the canon of the New and Old Testaments in the year 382 at the Synod of Rome. This decision was ratified again at the councils of Hippo and Carthage in the 4th and 5th century. Furthermore, the reason you accept the books you do is that they were in the Bible someone gave you when you first became a Christian. You accept them because they were handed on to you. This means you accept the canon of the New Testament that you do because of tradition. Because tradition is simply what is handed on to us from those who were in the faith before us. So your knowledge of the exact books that belong in the Bible, such as Philemon and 3 John, rests on tradition rather than on scripture itself. The question you have to ask yourself is this. Where did we get the Bible? Until you can give a satisfactory answer, you aren't in much of a position to rely on the authority of scripture or to claim that you can be certain that you know how to accurately interpret it. This was a very enlightening conversation. Great talking with you.